Dobry day. My name is Vata Raya Jelinska. My name is Raisa Jelinski. Today, I'll be interviewing Jim Timothy, our 11th alumni of the alumni video series. Most recently, Mr. Temerty was the chair of the Board of Directors of Northland Power, one of Canada's first independent power producers, a company that he co-founded. Mr. Temerty is also known for his philanthropic contributions nationally and internationally. He was appointed a member of the Order of Canada in 2008 and named Entrepreneur of the Year in Canada in 2010. In 2012, he was awarded the Queen Elizabeth 11, sorry, <laughs> to Diamond Jubilee Medal. And in 2016, he was awarded the Order of Yaroslav the Wise, which is the highest tribute Ukraine can confer to a foreign citizen who has not been a head of state, among many other awards. Lastly, along with his wife, Louise, Mr. Temerty was named among the 50 most influential Canadians in 20, 2001. The foundation donated $250 million to the U of T Faculty of Medicine, now the Temerte Faculty of Medicine. Most recently, the Temerty Foundation donated $10 million to help us help the children, a humanitarian organization based in Ukraine and Canada. Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure, Raisa. Good to see you. My first question is, where did you go to university and what did you study? I, I went to uh, Concordia in Montreal. It was called Sir George Williams University at the time. And um, I, I, I was in the arts faculty and I studied arts subjects and economics. Okay. And what was your involvement in your Ukrainian student organization at your university? By the way, in, in, in full interest of uh, complete disclosure and honesty, I didn't graduate. So, so I told you I attended. I didn't graduate. I, um, I left um, uh, more than a year short of uh, a degree, thinking that I would finish at night. And of course, I, I was not able to finish at night. I was not able to finish at night, in case you're interested, because I went to work for IBM. And uh, about two years into the job, they asked me to move to the United States to take a position in um, a uh, very big product development and manufacturing facility in Kentucky. And so I was there for four years. And by the time that was over, you know, there was no point in going back to, to school. I mean, it seems to have worked out for you. <laughs> it's all fine. It wasn't, yes, it wasn't an impediment. Um, so my second question is, what was your involvement in your Ukrainian student club? Well, I was, yes, I was, I was, I was president of the Sir George Williams student club. Um, for a couple of years, and it, it was a, it was a blast. <laughs> I had a, we had a lot of fun, and um, we we most notably, I still have this. Most notably, can you see that? Oh yeah, I can. Yeah, so we staged a Ukrainian week. This was in 1963, and that graphic was drawn by my sister. Mila, she's an artist, and um, we had an, an outstanding uh, success. We did so many things, and and frankly, we we made so much money with um, a couple of concerts that we ran that um, we had to have a police escort bring bring the cat the hoard of money home from from the concerts at Plateau Hall in Montreal. And uh, when we counted all the money. You know, we didn't know what to do with, with this cash. And so I called the principal of the school and I said, uh, we've got all this cash. What do we do? What do we do now? And he said, well, I've never had that problem before. It's usually, you know, the university is funding uh, students organizations. So he said, just put it in the bank. So we, you know, we put it in the bank and used it over the years. Wow, that's very impressive. I'll have to learn from you for uh, the current events that post COVID we will uh, hopefully host. Um, so my next question is, what is your current and or most recent uh, occupation? Or anything before that, if you'd like to share. Sure, so, so um, the history is something like this. So I, I, um, I joined IBM and as a salesman in Montreal. And uh, I loved the company and I loved the work. I couldn't believe that, uh, you know, I was given this opportunity to be a sales representative for, for 
IBM and I had this territory that, that, that was exclusively mine and nobody else could go into that territory and sell uh, my, my, my products. Our product line was the office products line. And um, I was very successful, uh, so much so that, um, you know, just a little over two years into it, the company, the company interviewed um, five salesmen across the country to choose one to go down and be a, um, a product planner on behalf of the World Trade Corporation. So World Trade Corporation, IBM, was the international arm of uh, IBM. And in Lexington, Kentucky, the office products division had a big research uh, lab and a, a product engineering uh, facility and manufacturing facility. And uh, so it was important that uh, the products that were coming out of that lab and that manufacturing facility would meet the requirements of um, countries around the world. And so they needed someone. So they interviewed five. And um, I remember the fellow, uh, Bruce Ramju, came around to do these interviews. And they asked me a bunch of questions that went very well. Next thing you know, they selected me to, to, to go down to, to IBM. So I spent four years there. I ended up being the manager of that function in, in, um, in the United States, traveled a lot back and forth between Kentucky and New York, or New York was the you know, headquarters, and often to Europe. And then I came back to, uh, to Canada where I was given, let's see, three, three branch uh, jobs in succession uh, over a, a course of five years, uh, then, then, um, then uh, asked to uh, move to Toronto to take a promotion into a district management position. So I did district management for the division for a number of years and, and uh, then finally took a large uh, head office job um, responsible for the marketing in the office products uh, division and responsible for a couple of uh, uh, profit lines, small profit lines in the division. Um, so all of that lasted 15 years. Over the course of those 15 years at AISA, I had um, 11 different bus business cards. So it was a, a tremendous ride and a, um, you know, a great success and a terrific, terrific, uh, um, shall we say, education for me. And after that, I, uh, I, uh, I joined someone to start a, a franchise called Computerland. Um, we started with one store on Young Street in Toronto which quickly became two stores, adding a store in Mississauga. And, um, and then over time, I grew that to 30 stores across Quebec and Ontario. And I was, I was uh, at the end, in the last two years of that six year uh, period, I was 90% uh, owner of that uh, chain of stores. My wife was very active with me in those stores. She loved uh, what she, her job and her job was to to be opening stores for us. So I would say, Louise, uh, let's, let's do Sarnia. So I would fly to Sarnia, I would pick a location, and then I would turn it over to Louise and, and she would have to do the rest. She would have to fit out the store and um, canvas for employees and, and sales representatives. She just loved it. And when we sold the business, she, she cried because you know, it was, a, it was a, being a retail environment, it, it was something that she re, you know, related to and uh, missed very much uh, being able to continue that. So we did that. And um, I immediately said, okay, Louise, we've, we've built our family's nest egg and I'm not going to do anything to risk that nest egg, but I am getting back into business, but I will look for a business that's recession proof. And initially I was going to do um, healthcare, something in healthcare, when a couple of fellows called me out of the blue uh, Ukrainian fellows, George Okrim and Alex Yukomenko, and they said, they said, Jim, how would you like to build a power plant? Power plant? I mean, I, I wasn't thinking, but what did, nothing, what did I know about power plants? Nothing. So I said, well, it's interesting, I'll, I'll have a look at it. My father was um, head of electrical engineering for Aluminum Company of Canada. The relevance of that to this, um, to this point is that, you see, uh, there's a tremendous amount of electricity that goes into making a ingot of uh, aluminum. And it was my dad's job to build power plants for, for um, Alcan all over the world. And so he knew, 
he knew power. I, so I called him up and I said, look, these fellows want to talk to me about a power plant. Why don't you come down and take a look? So he flew down, we sat down, uh, they showed us a drawing. My father looked at it and he said, basically he said, Chipuha. <laughs> you know what that means? I don't think so, no. So Chipuha means sort of like, uh, he said that privately to me, not in front of the other people. It's like, it's not a big deal. It's a, it was a 10 megawatt power plant. So it's not, not big, okay. um, but it was big for me. And uh, so I said to the fellows, okay, let me do my uh, due diligence and I'll be back to you uh, when I've completed my, uh, my uh, study of the question. And so after about a couple of three months, I went back and I said, okay, uh, I'd like to do this, but I think this is, a, this is not just a power plant. I think this is a business. I think this has a future in, in this province and indeed in the country. And so I gave it a name asked my, my, my sister to um, draw up the business card. Um, uh, and um, our way we went. And it's become the company that it is today with a market capitalization that's probably, oh, close to 10 billion and an enterprise value that uh, uh, I think is approaching 15 billion. So it's, it's massive and operating in, you know, all over the world now. So I did that. I also did a company called um, Soft Choice, and Soft Choice was um, was the outgrowth of uh, what I had done in Computerland. After we sold Computerland, um, the company went on in the name of Computerland. Without getting into a lot of story about how that all happened, it was a very, very exciting um, uh, process. And a couple of people came to me who had been my best store managers, Computerland store managers. David Holgate and Joni Panavis. And they said, uh, Jim, uh, we have this idea and we were wondering whether you would join us and, and, and help us. And I said, um, I was flattered that, you know, they, after a couple of years, they'd come back to the, the old boss. And I said, sure. So I, I met with them and I put up the seed capital and they, they asked me to chair the company. So I chaired uh, Soft Choice. It was called Soft Choice Corporation. Soft Choice Corporation happens to be in the newspaper just today in the Globe and Mail, announcing the fact that it's gone public yet again, the second time around. Anyway, so I did that. I chaired it for 16 years. Over the course of those 16 years, uh, we, we, uh, we became a public company. Uh, I, uh, I uh, was the biggest shareholder. I, I own 42% of the company um, at, the, at the last. And um, then I sold uh, my position in Soft Choice and put the proceeds of that uh, to work in Northland Power so that I could maintain a larger equity position in Northland. As we started to build bigger and bigger plants, I needed, I needed money to leverage the, the, uh, the financing that I would need to build those plants. So I took Soft Choice money, put it into Northland and continued uh, that way. Wow, that's all very impressive. And I even learned a new word from you. So that's which, word, which word is that? Chibuha. 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 Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, and by the way, so I told you I, I was, I, I had intended to go into healthcare, right? And because I saw that as something that was recession proof and I didn't, but I am because I retired from Northland, but Three years ago, I, uh, well, I founded a, a medical device company. And just a few weeks ago, we got our FDA and our Health Canada approval. So now we can, we can market our medical device clear across North America. Um, we're, we're just building the company. We have something like uh, 34 employees now, and by the end of the year, we'll be at 52 employees. And we've already, um, we've already secured some business in the United States. So it's looking very promising. Healthcare. So I, uh, I have a business degree, um, but I actually started in medical science. Uh, so I have a science degree as well, but um, ah. the, this would be a, a conversation for offline. But 
investing in healthcare and starting a healthcare company, I think that's quite fascinating due to the like, highly regulated nature. It's not that power isn't regulated, but in Canada, healthcare is its own beast. Oh, absolutely. It took us a long time to get the FDA approval. A long and arduous uh, uh, process, but uh, yeah, we finally got it. Good for you. Yeah, maybe I'll ask you about that offline so it don't take okay. too long. Um, so my next question is, how do you think your involvement in your Ukrainian student club helped you in advancing your career and or personal development? Absolutely crucial. Why? Because, um, you know, you're a young person and you're just kind of feeling your oats. Um, and you discover that, that you can actually organize things and uh, lead people um, and uh, speak in public and, um, you know, be good at it. One of the things I did during the course of that time in university was also, was also um, starting a drama club together with a fellow called George Mikituk. Um, George became the president. I was the vice president of the uh, drama club and we put on several, several performances of uh, Spanska Mucha. We even traveled uh, with Spanska Mucha at one point to, uh, to Ottawa. But that wasn't the only thing we did. We did, we did other things, uh, you know, on stage. So uh, that kind of involvement, you know, um, builds confidence and tells you that there's nothing to fear. You, you, could, you, you, could, you could do these, uh, these things. Um, so so that, that was, that was uh, very important. Um, when, I, um, when I went to apply for the position with IBM, you know, they asked about uh, what I had done in school. I, had, I didn't have the degree and yet, and yet they hired me, which was an exception because the, the policy of the company was not to hire unless you had a minimum of a college degree. But um, I guess I said enough things that uh, uh, they found uh, compelling. And among those things was the fact that I, 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 I had these leadership positions in student organizations, including one uh, with the International Students Organization. So this is really interesting. The ISO um, ran something called the Model United Nations, right? Like this, you've, yeah. uh, you've heard of it, right? Mm -hmm. so, so I say, well, we'll participate. And I wanna go with my people as the Ukrainian delegate representing the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic. Right, but we're, we're big patriots. So it didn't sit well with us that we would be representing the Ukrainian so Soviet Socialist Republic. Uh, so here's what I did. I went to, um, I think his name was Rahmani, who was, who was a, a CBC type um, with a expertise in all things uh, Ukrainian and Soviet, and um, uh, he would have he had a broadcast in, and I think it was was it Radio Free Europe or something equivalent to that. And I said to Professor Rahmani, I said, you know, I I want I want to secede as the delegate from from the Ukrainian SSR. I want to secede from the Soviet Union. Would you help me write the speech that I should make to the assembly. And so he did. And so uh, I had this speech. And when the moment came, um, one of our people ran up to the, the booths upstairs that were doing the simultaneous uh, translations. And um, I went up to the stage and um, proceeded to speak to the assembly. And by the way, it was like hundreds and hundreds of people at the University of Montreal, a large audience, and I proceeded to speak in Ukrainian with this, with the simultaneous translation going on upstairs into, uh, into English and French. Can you believe it? So I spoke in Ukrainian, declaring secession from, <laughs> from, from the Soviet Union. That was a blast. So again, when you do things like that, you know, it, it uh, empowers you later in life to be able to do significant uh, significant things. You know, one of the things that we did was 
But Isa, you sitting there and asking these questions, uh, you know, brings these things to mind. Um, so at that period, the uh, uh, groups were starting to travel from the Soviet Union to North America to perform. One of those groups was the Virsky Ensemble. Ever hear of them? Virsky Song and Dance. I feel like Virsky. I should have heard of them, but... I hope I don't have it mixed up. There's Veryovka and there's Virsky. And anyway, one of the Ukrainian, um, you know, Song and Dance Ensemble. And so we went to the concert at the Forum in Montreal. And after the concert, we heard that there would be a reception for, for these Ukrainian singers and dancers. Mm -hmm. And so we crashed the party. And here's, here's the thing. The reception was held in a communist hall in Park Extension in Montreal. Um, but, you know, we were young students. We went to the door and we, we just, we crashed the party. They let us in. I mean, we didn't look like we were threatening. And we sat there among these, um, these um, Ukrainian dancers and, and, uh, and singers. And it was just a, such a thrill. I mean, we'd never met any, any real, you know, I mean, Ukrainians from the old country. And uh, at one point, there was a stage at the front and there was a fellow playing on the piano. At one point, I looked at Kelebai and at Ihor Luhve, and we kind of went, eh. and we went to the stage Luhove shoved the piano player off the piano and he sat down and he started to play Shena Verla Ukraina to an assembly of communists with including the, uh, the Russian ambassador to Canada who was in, uh, he was the key person, the keynote speaker that evening. It was a, it was a, it was a scandal for, for, for those assembled, but we sang the whole Shena Merla Ukraina, uh, bodyguards started to, you know, come up to the stage, come at us, and the ambassador waved them off because, you know, we're students and he, he, was, he was smart enough to know not to cause, you know, uh, a scene. And we got off the stage and, got, <laughs> and left, but uh, so that was pretty exciting times. <laughs> Fantastic, for lack of a better word. It was fun. That's... Yeah. Yeah. But all those heard... things... Listen, I can't, I can't recommend more highly that people should get involved um, in extracurricular activities and, and take leadership positions, you know, treasurer, vice president, president, whatever, head up committees and, um, and, and, and develop your uh, communication uh, skills and develop your leadership and organizational abilities. It will serve you well later. I mean, I'm a few years younger than you, but I agree in, in my limited time, um, you know, I, I'm going graduating this year, but definitely helpful in terms of landing my first job and everything. Well, you're already doing it. You know, just what you're doing here is, is, is important. Uh, so my last question is, do you have any tips for current students? And I know you've already provided some. Um, these tips can be related to Ukrainian student club involvement, Susk, the Ukrainian community, or just general career tips, or all of the above? These are all very important. Uh, you've already heard that. But additionally, I would say uh, the following, and I've held this view from, uh, from the very beginning. Once you leave school and you go to work, it's important to, for me, it was important to put a lot of that behind me and focus on the big pond and make something of yourself in the big pond, in the big world. And by making something of yourself in the big world, you can return to the community that you sprang from and, 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 and contribute and give back to that community in a bigger way than you would have been able to do had you just limited yourself to smaller things in, in the smaller community. So that's what I did uh, for, for, for a long, long time until, until um, you know, I had developed a, a certain momentum in my uh, business career. And then I started giving back to the community in various ways. 
Makes sense. <laughs> It makes sense to me and it again it worked out and I think everyone's thankful that you did come back and became oh yeah no uh, that's that's right and uh, we're uh, we sponsor a lot of things that uh, you know that uh, we 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 hope I hope um, goes some way to trying to make uh, you know the Ukrainian community in the world and and uh, importantly uh, Ukraine uh, rise to the level of a respected, valued member of the European Union. Ukraine has so much talent. You know, I've been there uh, many, many times. We used to have a business in Ukraine until it was taken away um, um, about 15 years ago. We were victims of a corporate raid, but um, long story, we won't get into that. And um, but I saw I saw the I saw the talent that that was and is in, in Ukraine, and it pains me that too often we were satisfied copying doing something that's been done before by other people. And I want to get to the point where instead of being satisfied with just, just repeating something that's, that's gone before, um, aiming to always be ahead, better, better. What, where's it written that you can't be better? And so, but it will come with, with time because the talent is there. And you're referring to Ukraine, not the, the Aspera. Is that correct? Ukraine, yeah. yeah. I'm just curious. Ukraine. Okay, as a, as a parting thought, Raisa, this is something that I learned a long, long time ago. When I first left uh, IBM and started doing business for myself, I would get, um, I would get a lot of people giving me advice uh, with the best of intentions. So I developed this approach. I would say, seek everyone's counsel, but follow your own. At the end of the day, to be successful with something, it has to be your own. Thank you for that piece of advice, but I'll be, be sure to uh, take my own or do what my gut feeling is. Um, it was great to hear from you, and I'm sure others will also enjoy hearing about you and your experience. Slava Ukraini, Heroim Slava. Heroim Slava. <laughs>